Hey, welcome back everybody. It's Scott from Oak Ridge Community Church. Glad to have you joining us for another study in our Life Minutes videos. Um, last week we began looking at Romans chapter 12. We talked about the need to present ourselves to God as a act of spiritual worship. In other words, giving ourselves to Him to be used by Him for His honor and glory. We also talked about the need to renew our minds and discussed a few practical ways to do that. Today, as we continue in Romans chapter 12, we're going to talk about serving. Now remember last week we mentioned that throughout Romans 12, the chapter talks about being a genuine or an authentic or real Christian. And part of being an authentic believer is seen in how we serve. Uh, doing things uh, that uh, honor the Lord, using the gifts and abilities that he has given us. And that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, in fact, at the end of chapter, or at the end of verse 2 of chapter 12, Paul mentions the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, the will of God are things that uh, God desires for us, things that he wants for us in our lives. When you leave verse 2 and head into verse 3 through the end of Romans 12, I believe that the rest of that chapter talks about the will of God. In other words, here are things that God wants us to do as believers. These are things that are uh, the perfect, the acceptable will of God, things that honor Him. So beginning in verse 3, and going down through verse 8, Paul talks about what we term spiritual gifts. Now, gifts, spiritual gifts, are something that are given to us by God. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. You will find them in other places in the Bible. 1 Corinthians 12 through 14 talks uh, very much uh, in depth about spiritual gifts. 1 Peter 4 mentions a gift or two, and possibly Ephesians 4 lists other gifts that God gives to believers to be used in service. Now, I have here next to me a golf club, and I don't have this so that I can wrap somebody on the head. Um, to get good at something, you have to practice. Now, I've played sports for most of my life, and no doubt, Golf for me has been the hardest and most challenging game to play. But I keep working at it, hopefully being I'm a little better than I was a few years ago, but it takes practice. And even though God gives us spiritual gifts, abilities, uh, and things uh, to be used in service for Him, if we never put them into practice, really, we're not doing any we're not, it, it doesn't do us any good, right? God gives us a gift, but we sit back and we do nothing. I can say that I want to play golf, but if I never work at it and I never pick up a club or I never practice, then all I'm doing is just saying, well, yes, I've got this golf club. I'd love to play golf, but I'm just not going to spend the time to do it. When it comes to spiritual gifts, we have to put them into practice. And it's not so that we become experts at our gifts. It's so that we can be used by the Lord. And that's what we're going to talk about today, spiritual gifts, because that's what Paul talks about in Romans 12. Now, let me first tell you that there is a danger that sometimes happens when we get into discussions about um, spiritual gifts. Now, I've heard this a couple of times throughout my life, not for several years, but sometimes people because they have a spiritual gift that maybe is a more behind the scenes gift, and I'll explain what I mean in a minute. They think that their giftedness, what God has given them to be used for his glory, uh, is not as important as someone else's. For example, a person with the gift of serving or helps often does behind the scenes types of work in the service of the kingdom. They see a need, maybe uh, somebody in the church or a neighbor, or somebody they work with, uh, and they reach out to help that person. And they do it without fanfare. They just do it because 
that's what they're, they're, you know, how they're molded by God. That's the gifts they've been given. Uh, and they use those in different settings. Some people have the gift of teaching, but not every teacher has to teach publicly uh, before a, a bunch of other people. Sometimes that teaching gift is used in one-on-one -on -one situations and so on and so forth. The point I wanna make is that of all the spiritual gifts that God gives, everyone is equally as important as another. So never think negatively that, well, I only have the gift of serving or I have the gift of giving, that it's not as important as the gift of teaching or the gift of leadership, because that's not true. Every gift is important. And if we get in, our, in this negative mindset that, well, I don't have anything to offer, then that just defeats uh, the whole idea of serving Christ because we become unappreciative of what God has given us. Chuck Swindoll makes a good point. He says, the freedom from comparing yourself with others results from a renewed mind. And that's what we talked about last week. So let's talk about spiritual gifts. Now, before we read from Romans 12, let me just make some comments. First of all, every Christian has at least one spiritual gift that is given to them when they become a follower of Christ. Now, probably most Christians have more than one gift, but what I've observed is usually there is one that we call the dominant gift. Uh, it's that gift that is used the most when we're serving the Lord. A second thing to keep in mind is that there's a difference of opinion on how many gifts there exactly are. Uh, some people list, there's been lists I've seen from anywhere from some 12 or 13 gifts up to 29 or 30 gifts. So there's uh, debated areas on how many spiritual gifts God actually gives to the church. So we're not going to get into how many there exactly are, but just know this, there's a difference of opinion on how many gifts there are. A third thing to keep in mind, and this is very important, uh, our spiritual gifts along with uh, our interests. In other words, the areas of passion that we have. For some, that might be, I really enjoy working in the area of sports. I really enjoy doing music and things like that. Those areas of interest often are tied to our spiritual gifts. Not always, but they are. And along with areas of interest and our personalities, how God has made us. So, along, so our gifts, our personalities, and our areas of interest can help us discover what ministry areas might best fit us. In Romans chapter 12, Paul does mention a few of the gifts. Now, 1 Corinthians 12 gives the longest list of gifts. But in here, he just mentions, for example, the gift of serving. He talks about teaching. He talks about the gift of exhorting or encouragement. He talks about the gift of giving, and then there's a, uh, a few other gifts that he mentions. So Paul talks here about several of the gifts that when we renew our minds, one of the ways that we're showing that we are following God's good and perfect will is to serve using the gifts God has given us. But he also, when it comes to serving, mentions a couple of things, and this is important. In verse 3, he says, For by the grace given to me, he says, I say to everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith, which most, most likely has to do with the gifts that God has given us, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned to each one of us. What is the writer saying? Well, when it comes to serving, we have to have the right attitude, the right mindset. And that is when we come to serving others, when it comes to serving Christ, we do it in humility. Now, what Paul is saying here at the first part of this verse is not to overthink uh, about how great we are or to have this inflated view of ourselves. 
Humility is being poor in spirit, which is what we are told in Matthew 5, 3, that we have to be. It is seeing that every day we need God in our lives. So that even when it comes to serving, that I can't serve unless the Lord is helping me to serve. Now, he's also not here talking about putting ourselves down. There's a lot of people who have this false humility, uh, almost a woe is me attitude. They, they almost like to try to make themselves suffer as if somehow that makes them better Christians. That's not what Paul's talking about. What he's talking about in verse 3 is simply reminding ourselves that God gives us the abilities to do what we do, and we are to be happy about that. And so it begins with humility. Lord, thank you for how you've wired me. Thank you for the gifts you've given me. Thank you for the talents and the abilities you've given me to serve you. And I, and I want to do that, Lord, because you have made me to serve you. The second part in that verse was to remind us again that God is the one who gives us the spiritual gifts. So there's no reason to be proud. The, the guy who has the spiritual gift of teaching, who maybe is very articulate in getting across what the scriptures are teaching and, and applying it to our lives, uh, if we're not careful, that person could get very proud about their abilities to communicate God's word. And there's a warning there not to get that way, to always keep in mind that God is the giver of the gifts. And in humility, we come and say, Lord, use me to serve you. And there is an important part that Paul mentions here. It is an interesting thing that when you read 1 Corinthians 12, Paul compares the church to the physical body. And in that chapter, he basically argues that we need in the church uh, everybody doing their part. In other words, every Christian who belongs to a church has a gift, a spiritual gift. And for the church to reach its potential to be used by God, we need to be serving within the church. Now that doesn't mean we don't reach out to the community around us. It doesn't mean we don't do things to help others through our gifts that are outside of the church. But the point is, 1 Corinthians 12 and here in Romans 12, where we are reminded of the fact that we need each other. Listen to verse four of Romans 12. For as in one body we have many members, and the, and the members do not all have the same function. We don't all have the same gifts. So we, though many, are one body in Christ and individually members one of another. So we have different gifts, but we all make up one body. So we need each other, all right? That's what he's saying. And the last thing he points out, not only about serving with the right attitude, not only about the fact that we need each other, but it's, I think, because he lists certain gifts, I think we need to discover how has God wired us? Here at Oak Ridge, we have a spiritual gift survey that people can take that walk them through certain questions and help them put together uh, their own understanding of their gifts, uh, their areas of interest, things like that, to help them. It's their own ministry profile, really, is what it is, to give them an idea of where they best maybe would fit in God's kingdom, where they best would serve. Um, so there are surveys out there. Other people say that what you should do is ask others what they think your gifts are and then try different areas of ministry. Uh, that's one way to find out whether you, know, you fit into that particular area of ministry or not. Experiment in different ministries. Nothing wrong with that. But what I want to encourage us to do is this. Recognize that since God has wired us with spiritual gifts, we are to uh, use them for his glory. Ask God to show us what we should do. And don't be afraid to do a spiritual gift survey. Uh, you will discover that uh, maybe God has given you a gift that you, know, you may have thought was there and you discovered it really was and someone else may have mentioned to you, you know, I think you have the gift of, and, 
maybe you didn't think so, but the more you began to look at things, you discovered, you know what? Yeah, God has given me the gift of serving. God has given me the gift of encouragement or exhortation. So to be a genuine, real, authentic Christian, we gotta be out there serving. We need to let people see Jesus. The only way we can do that is when we reach out to others. Hey, this is Scott from Oak Ridge. Have a great week. Thanks for tuning in.